Hey guys, this is a short one today, but this is really this is pretty cool how this works, and we're going to use it to our advantage. And it is, this is another one of those things where you can do on a piece of paper if you've learned this, and you should with Saxon because they just repeat it over and over. Um, and you can be sitting there in a chemistry class or a biology class or a higher math class or whatever, and you just do this. You can just do this on a piece of paper rather than having to go, oh, "Where's my calculator? I can't do it." You know, whatever. It's really cool. I'll, I'll ask you this question. Look at that screen. You tell me the answer to that. Tell me the answer. You know, what's the answer to each little piece, and then what's the final answer? Pause it if you want to. Okay, the answer to the square root of four is two, right? Okay, so that's gonna be two. So we have two here, and then we have times the square root of 18, that'll be, excuse me, 16, that'll be four. So two times four is eight, right? Okay, well, so in other words, we know the answer to that is 8. Now, I'll tell you what somebody, show you what somebody did at, at some point. Um, well, here, I'll, you know, I'll just show you. This is what somebody did at some point. They went, wait a minute, 8. And look, 16 times 4. Let's see, 16 times 4. Uh, uh, oh, that's 60. Hey, wait a minute. The square root of 64 is 8. Hmm. Let's try it out. All right? So here's what you do in your head. You tell me the answer. The square root of 81 is equal to the square root of 9 times what? That's what we want. What goes in there? Think about it. Pause it if you want to. Okay, maybe you pause. Okay, the square root of 81, let's just rewrite the whole thing over. All right, square root of 81, that's 9. So that equals, equals, the square root of 9 you know is 3, and then times, <coughs> excuse me, the, what, what goes in here? We know 9 is 3 times 3, right? So the square root of what number will give you 3? Well, obviously the answer is 9. You should look at this and go, wait a minute, wait a minute. The square root of 4 times the square root of 16, that's the same thing as 8, which is the square root of 64. That's what 16 times 4 is. Wait a minute. The square root of 81 is the square root of 9 times the square root of 9. Wait a minute. Okay. So at some point, however many hundreds or, or thousands of years ago, Somebody figured this out <coughs> and went, oh, wow, okay, let's just make this a rule. Let me try it a million times. Gee, it works every time. So here's what they call it in algebra. If you want to write this down, you can, or you can just remember. The square root of m times the square root of n is the square root of m times n, right? Okay, and we can go backwards, too. Look at this. The square root of m n, if you start with that, which you will, that's what's going to happen in this book, you could bust that down into two pieces. That's the square root of m times the square root of n. In other words, you can sit there and go, and I'll, let me make this a different color here, but anytime you see, I don't know, the square root of uh, 20, let's say, well, what, what is that? I don't know. But you can go, oh, well, I know. I can go like this. That's the square root of 2 times the square root of 10. Hmm, interesting. Okay, doesn't help us a whole lot, but at least it's true. You can also go like this and go, okay, well, wait a minute. The square root of 20, that's the square root. Let's see, what are the factors of 20 besides 2 and 10? Yeah, 4 and 5, right? The square root of 4 times the square root of 5. In other words, this is the same as that. You could break it up into, into factors. Now, you, you might look at that one on the bottom, the square root of 4. You should go, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. The square root of 4 is 2. So what you can do is you can just go, okay, well, that's just 2 and then times the square root of five. And that actually is the kind of thing we're gonna be doing from now on. In other words, you'll look at 20 and you're gonna think, okay, are there any factors of 20 that are what they call perfect squares that you can find the actual integer square root of? If not, not much you can do it. Square root of two times the square root of 10, or whatever, I don't know what, neither one of those, I have any idea what the answer to it is. But if you, if you break it up into 4 and 5, oh, we do know what the square root of 4 is. That's 2. So you can write the, like the simplified answer as 2 times the square root of 5. And this isn't like theoretical and, gee, I don't know. It does work. If you were to plunk in in your calculator, what's the square root of 20? You get a number. Then if you plunked in, okay, if you cleared it and you went, okay, the square root of 5, boop, 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 there it is. And you went, okay, I'm going to multiply it now by 2. Oh, it's the same number I just got as I plugged in the square root of 20. It works. So this is true. So, but we're not going to worry about decimals and all that jazz. We're just going to worry about breaking down numbers. This is where you need to know your times tables and your division tables and that kind of stuff. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Let's look at this one. Let's write this one down. If you need to pause, go ahead. 
square root of fifty well let's do it we know from the rule that we can break fifty down into two factors right ok so you might go oh i know fifty that's five times ten so this is my answer the square root of five times the square root of ten that is very nice but it won't help us any at all ok uh, we need to figure out from fifty a different set of factors where one of those will be a perfect square. You might know it, okay? What else can we break down 50 into? <clears throat> yeah, okay, you probably said square root of 25 times the square root of two, right? Okay, that's, that, is, that works as well, okay? Well, you should look at the square root of 25 and go, wait a minute, the square root of 25, well, that's just five. Okay, <clears throat> and then times the square root of two, and then is your simplified answer. There you go. Here's another way, just in case you ever go, oh, I can't see the, I can't see the factors. I'm, I'm not too great at this. You know how to use a factor tree? Remember those? Using a factor tree? All you need to do, if you can't see it right in your head, what the factors are that you need, go and just make a nice factor tree. Write a 50, okay? All right. 50 breaks down. Let's just say you didn't see 25 and 2. You just went, oh, there's a 5 and there's a 10. Remember what you do when you find a prime number? You just circle it, right? At least somehow note it or underline it or whatever. Okay, 10, just keep going. That's going to be 2 and that'll be 5. Okay, so in other words, these are the three numbers that should now go under this radical, not a 50. In other words, you're going to have this as your answer. You can get, and you'll get to a point where you're faster at this. So there's a 5, there's a 2, and there's a 5, right? Okay. Well, what you can do is you can go anytime you see a pair of numbers, like they're 5, in other words, they're two fives. <clears throat> you can, when you see a pair, you go and you pull it out and you put it there once. That's gone. Gone. So you have a 5 on the outside. There aren't any other pairs, so the 2 just sits there. Or if you have a couple of numbers that are not paired up, just multiply them together. In other words, if you had a 3 underneath here without a pair, you would write 2 times 3 or 6 under the radical. And if you had a, which, which you don't. So all we're going to do is you're going to go, okay, well the, the 5 is on the outside, and then the 2 is underneath, and yoink, there we go. And that should look vaguely familiar to you because that's exactly what we had right there. So you choose your method. You might look at one and go, oh yeah, it's 25 times 2, the square root of 25 is 5, 5 square root of 2, boom. Or you might go, ah, it's kind of a bigger number. I don't know how to handle this. Uh, in that case, just write down your factor two because these numbers are going, going to get big. Okay, not too terribly big, but relatively big. All right, like this, <laughs> the square root of 175. Okay. Well, again, you might look at this and go, wait a minute. I know what goes into 175. 25 goes in. It goes seven times. You might. Here's your thought process. You might go, oh, I know this. This is the square root of 25 times the square root of 7. Okay, well, the square root of 25, that's 5. So 5 times the square root of 7, got it. You might be fast like that. You might not. If, you, if you're not, just sit here and go 175. And you might even look at this, you might not even recognize that 25 goes into this. Yeah, fine, who cares, okay? That's where you go, well, I know 5 goes in there, you know, because it ends in a 5, so it does. Now, how many times is 5 go into 175, <clears throat> excuse me, and you go, you go sit here and do all the arithmetic and you go, okay, I got it, 35. So 35 is there. Okay, 35, my times tables, I know that. That's gonna be five times seven. Okay, so not, I'm not gonna write 175, I'm gonna write 175, no, I guess I'm not gonna write that. It's a tragedy getting old. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna write the five, the five and the seven. So five times five times seven, okay. And again, our rule, remember, if you see any, any number in there paired up, pair it up and just take it out here as it, it's once. That's gone, that pair. And of course, if you notice, this turns into five on the outside, seven on, underneath the radical, which is exactly what you got right there. Bingo, there you go, okay? All right, using that, eh, you know what, let's do this. This is a different one. <laughs> okay, 147, okay. This is a funky one. All right, now, uh, you, at some point you're gonna have to start remembering your rules of multiplication and division and all that kind of stuff. In other words, you might be looking at 147 and going, uh, I, I don't know, I give up, I'm gonna become a hermit and where well, they don't need algebra. 
and just live with the you know while the hogs out in the bushes or whatever as tempting as that might be stick with it for a couple of seconds here first off you can eliminate as factors of 147 every even number right it ain't gonna work you can also eliminate five because five doesn't go into there so really you're left with like what three uh, seven and nine well also don't forget your rule if you add these digits together one plus four plus seven that equals 12 if the number 12 is divisible by three then so is that number okay um, and I can tell you a, a trick to try whether you're taking you know this class or another one or like an SAT or something like that a lot of times the answer is seven that nobody thinks of so try that one all right let's just say you went oh I know my three rule okay I did it okay and you went three into 147 and you went okay it's 49 okay well what you can do is you can go okay well this is the same thing as three times 49 now you <clears throat> again you might not I mean, you should recognize 49 for what it is, okay? This is, in other words, 7 times 7. So what you can do, you don't have to actually break this down into 7 and then another 7 and then cross them out, but you can just go, square root of 49, 7. Yoop, it goes out here, that's a 7, you are done with that. The only thing left underneath the radical is the 3, that's what your final answer should look like right there. And the factor tree will also work as well, but you don't really need too much of that, okay? All right. Let's try 108. So, you know what? I'll let you do this. So, pause it, write down the square root of 108, use your factor tree or use whatever, and you know, figure it out. Every time you see a little pair, pull it out and leave what's left under the radical. So, go ahead and pause it. Okay, let's say you did the factor tree. If you do the factor tree, it does not matter which one you do first. You might remember 9 times 12 is 108. You might just go, I'm just going to go 2 over here and 54. Or you might somehow know that 36 times 3 is 108. Or whatever. Let's just say you did your time. You, oh, I remember. Yeah, 9 times 12. Okay? Those aren't prime. We're going to go 3 and 3. 12 will go 3 and 4. 4, that busts up to 2 and 2. Okay? In other words, you don't want 108 underneath there anymore. You're done with 108. What you want is all this string of nonsense right here. Okay? 3, 3, 3, 2, 2. So, 3... Three, three, two, and two. Okay, and all we're doing is we're pulling out pairs, right? Oh, there's a pair. Pull it out. That's a three. Done. Don't use it. But three is by itself. Two is a pair. Pull that out. Now it's going to be multiplied. Don't just write 32, you know. Okay, that's gone. Only thing left is a three. So you can write three. We're done. Okay, now three times two, six. That is it. That's all there is to it. Now, you might have, let's say you were some kind of a genius and you recognized, oh, I know 108 is 36 times 3. You might have looked at that and gone, oh, wait a minute, the square root of 36, oh, the square root of 36 is 6. Oh, so that's just going to be <clears throat> the square root of 36 is 6. I'll put that on the outside. And the only thing left on the inside is just the 3. And you, oh, it's the same thing. Oh, there it is. Okay, same thing. This is like I'm making algebra at all. It's just arithmetic. Okay, a couple of examples of repeating decimals. You should know, I don't have an exact list. I mean, you should know that a half is, you know, 0.5. You should probably know that a fourth is, you know, 0.25. Three fourths is 0.75. Um, I would know my thirds too. One third is 0.3, and you just keep repeating that decimal. Uh, two thirds is point, you know, you just keep repeating that. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I know some kids, you know, know all their eighths, like one eighth is 0.125, two eighths is just a fourth, but like three eighths is 0.375. If you know a bunch of those, at least these, on the left, I lost my thing here, there's, uh, if you know these, those are, you'd be in pretty good shape. But let's look at a couple of these um, at your home and uh, go ahead and do A and uh, pause it and see what you get. Okay, A is 5 times the square root of 3. In other words, you should have busted up 75 into, I mean, you might have seen this. Oh, 25 times 3. Oh, wait, this is 20. The square root of 25 goes out there. It's a 5, and then that's all that's left. There you go. Okay, let's try B, so pause it. Okay, well, here's the answer to B. It is 10 times the square root of 2. 
Now, again, <clears throat> you might have gone over here and gone, I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, 200. Okay. And you go on, you go, let's say, I don't know, 50 times four. Maybe you did that. I don't know. It doesn't matter how you start it. You'll, as long as you do it right, you'll finish just like the next person. 50 would be five times 10. There's a five there. 10 is a five and a two. So in other words, you ended up with five, five, two, two, and two. You might have also looked at 200 and gone, wait a minute, the square root of 200, that's the same thing as the square root of 100 times two, right? 100 times two is 200. Then you went, oh, wait a minute, 100, the square root of 100 is 10. That's just gonna be 10 times the square root of two, which is what this is. But let's say you didn't, you went over here and you went, okay, five, five, two, two, and two. You there? Okay. Well, there's a pair. Pull it out. That's a five. Boop. Gone. Pull out another pair. There's a two. There's two times five. There's only a two left, right? So there's two times five, which is ten, and then the only thing left under the radical is two. There you go. That's it. All right. C. Try C. Give it a whirl. Okay. Again, C is a little funky. You know it's no, no even number, but you should look at this and go, Wait a minute, I remember my, my rule. What was it? Oh, if all the digits add up to something or the other that's divisible by three, it's also divisible by three. So you go, okay, one plus eight plus nine is 18. Well, 18 is divisible by three. And it's actually divisible by nine as well. But we'll just pretend you didn't, you didn't remember anything but three. Well, then you divide it, right? You go 189 divided by three, and you do the arithmetic, and there's your 63, okay? And there are the 63, you should know your times tables. That's seven times nine. And then 9, of course, busts up to 3 times 3. In other words, this is no longer the square root of 189. It's the square root of 3733. Of 3, 7, oops, that should be a times. 7, 3, and 3. Okay, well, you can look at this and go, well, there's a pair. That's a 3. And that goes on the outside. Yoop. And that's it. So there's my 3. Underneath, you don't just leave 3 times 7. Just go ahead and put times 21. Okay, there you go. Okay. Pause it and try D. Okay, now D we didn't go over because, you know, it's just one of those, many of these, uh, let's go back here, to these ones to memorize. I probably should have put on there um, your sixths or whatever, but you could look at the next page and just recognize that 0.166 is exactly half of one third, which is 0.333, and that'll be one sixth. Okay, don't sweat those too terribly much, but um, look at the page. It's page 258 in your book, and look at those over those and memorize those. So, anyway, okay, see you guys next time. Have a great day.